Ladies and gentlemen, our 25th Kimpro Platinum Standard for Business is Dr. Baba Kalyani. He has also been a Kimpro Gold Standard for Business in 2006. Ten years, ten years later, he's back for Platinum. May I request Paul to please read the citation? Ah, before I read out the citation for Dr. Baba Kalyani, I seek your indulgence and want to share a little personal experience I had with Mr. Hemendra Kothari about six or seven years ago. <coughs> Thanks to his protege, Amit Chandra, who requested that I meet up with Mr. Kothari. It was supposed to be a 15-minute interview. And he, besides his wildlife interests, he also has a pet project of vocational training skills, especially for people who are displaced from wildlife sanctuaries. He wanted to do something in Ranthambore, and uh, we at the YMCA are specialists in vocational training. That 15-minute interview took an hour and 20. And when he reached me to the door and then to the lift, he said this, thank you for your time and for the expertise. I thought that was a forgotten chapter. I thought that was a... I'm tempted to say three days, but on the fourth day, there was a lovely letter from him with a substantial amount for the vocational training center of the YMCA's. That doesn't stop there. Every year, for the past seven years, come February, the check comes to the YMCA. Thank you ever so much, Mr. Hemant. And now to another very distinguished gentleman, Dr. Baba Kalyani, Chairman and Managing Director, Bharat Forge Limited, Pune. Embarked on his career with the company in 1972. Bharat Forge is the flagship company of the Kalyani Group and is the second largest forging manufacturer in the world. Apart from India, it has manufacturing units in the USA, Germany, Sweden, and China. Truly an Indian multinational. Dr. Baba Kalyani believes in the power of technology. He believes that the benchmark quality is the visa for entry into any market. He also believes that there are no consolation prizes for being second in the market. And yet more, he believes in building quality into the design of his products. As a leader, Dr. Kalyani is adept at dealing and synergizing with multiple business cultures in the global arena a benchmark. He is the role model for students in several management schools for his wisdom, humility, and listening skills, and for his singular focus on world-class quality to achieve business excellence. Over the years, Dr. Kalyani has nurtured 38 global automobile manufacturers as loyal customers. He has also developed the capabilities of several global suppliers by being an exacting customer. Dr. Kalyani has a dream, a dream for Green India. A decade ago, he partnered with multinational organizations to manufacture energy efficient wind turbines for the domestic as well as the international markets. A true visionary, a true missionary. Dr. Baba Kalyani actively evangelizes that the world is flat. He also evangelizes looking for the third alternative in decision making. The industry respects him the world over in India, Japan, Russia, UK, France, Germany and Sweden. He is a known and a very popular figure. Beyond business, Dr. Kalyani is the founder chairman of Pratham Pune Education Foundation that provides primary education to underprivileged children of local communities. This NGO has benefited over 100,000 children in Pune. Dr. Baba Kalyani, making India proud globally. In 2008, Dr. Kalyani was conferred the Padma Bhushan for his outstanding contribution to trade and industry in India. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Baba Kalyani. May I request Mr. N. Chandrasekharan and Mr. N. H. Israni to please felicitate Dr. Kalyani.
You know, it's a very humbling experience to stand here and uh, receive this award from the Pimcrow Foundation. First of all, uh, my grateful thanks to you, Mr. Lilla, your uh, trustees, the members of the jury who thought that I would be the right person for this platinum award of your foundation. You know, for me, manufacturing has always been a passion. I did my engineering uh, pretty early in life, uh, passed out from the Birla Institute in 1970, then went on to MIT in Boston, did my master's, came back and started working with my father. Manufacturing in the 70s in India was a very different business model than what you see today. It was a business model that worked under a highly regulated system. You had various organizations of the government. I'll just name two of them. Uh, some of you might know there was something called the DGTD, Director General of Technical Development. They decided what machine you should have, what material you should use, and what product you should make. <laughs> of course, it's a different story uh, today. And then you had the Department of Industry, which decided how much you should make and how much, uh, what kind of a license you should have to produce. So that was the environment that uh, I grew up in uh, from the 70s. And in the 70s, in the 80s, Indian manufactured products had no respect. Everything imported was uh, uh, supposed to be good. Anything that came from Japan was good. Anything that came out of Germany was even better, uh, or for that matter, from the United States. And this kind of bugged me to no end. And that little, little fire uh, in me to say, why can't Indian companies uh, stand on their own feet? Why can't Indian companies uh, uh, create capability through technology and become global leaders in their own business. And that spark uh, that was lit up, I had the good fortune of having a fairly good amount of young engineers, good young managers, who started believing exactly the same thing that I believed in. And towards the end of the 80s, just before the liberalization took place, just before Prime Minister Narasimha Rao and Dr. Manmohan Singh made that very famous decision that changed India forever uh, <clears throat> in 1991, where licensing was abolished, this DGTD was closed down, uh, trade was liberalized, uh, capital markets were liberalized, the banking system became a lot better. I mean, everything changed uh, for the country. And just a couple of years before that, we made a decision that we will like to get into the global markets head on and compete with the rest of the world. Uh, of course, the 91 liberalization helped uh, because things were much faster, much easier to implement. But it took us close to a decade uh, to change our business model. We did some very simple things. The manufacturing business model that was built on muscle power, uh, low technology, low capital, we reversed it upside down <clears throat> and we said let's make it high technology, highly educated workforce and of course much larger capital. People thought we were crazy, we were stupid. There were articles written about me in the newspaper saying I'm going to put the company down the hole. But, uh, I mean, that decision is what changed uh, uh, things for us and I think changed a lot of things for India. And the rest is history. Uh, today, every second truck manufactured in the United States carries a very safety critical product called the Axle from us, which we make in Pune. <laughs> and there are any number of such stories. You can't buy a car that doesn't have a Bharat Forge product, no matter where it's made in the world. 
So Indian manufacturing has, uh, uh, has got its place, a long ways to go. The Prime Minister has now put in uh, the manufacturing mission uh, to make India a manufacturing hub, to make manufacturing 25% of our GDP. And if you, if you watch the ET conclave that took place a few days ago, and you watch people like Jeff Melt who are considered, uh, let's say, the most respected uh, uh, leaders of companies in this sector, they all talk that in the next 10 to 15 years, India is going to become the manufacturing superpower. So with these few words, thank you very much. I really appreciate and very humble at this award.